Welcome back, everybody. It's a great day here on the HN Network. Every Tuesday, we get the honor of joining you, hopefully in your living room or wherever you're uh, viewing this from. It's The Drive with Denise DeGregoli. The Drive seeks to connect people, places, ideas, and organizations that move us forward mindfully and consciously. We have an incredible show today. We always start off with a mindful minute. And that's just something for you to kind of set you the tone of your day, maybe give you a little something to think about, maybe shift your perspective. Today, I liked Ma Mark Twain's top tips for living a good life. Let him say it instead of me today. Uh, approve of yourself, he said. Your limitations may just be in your mind. Lighten up and have a little more fun. Let go of your anger. Release your sense of entitlement. Keep your focus steady to what you want. And do exactly what you want. I thought these were great tips in lieu of our guest that's back with us. We have saw her here back in April and she's achieved so much not only for her personal career and her employees but for the community at large helping uh, outreach programs affecting adults with special needs. So I'm not going to go on anymore, but I'm just going to welcome Hannah Perry thank from you. The Giggling it's Pig. great to be back. Thank that, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is like a success story on steroids here <laughs> for a return. So for, for people that don't know, you own The Giggling Pig Studio. Yes. You came to the U.S. from England several years ago yeah. with a passion for helping people with special needs. Yes, I did. And you're formally educated in? Childhood education and development. Right. Um, which is actually called the NNEB in England. I see. So you started the Giggling Pig, which is in Shelton. Yeah. We have so much to, because between April and now, you have a second location, but you won some incredible international awards. Yes. The Stevie Award, top employer, bronze for putting happiness in our community? Yes, that's right. Tell uh, us about that. Okay, so I, um, I'm really proud of my team. Um, we all work extremely hard, but um, what's happened, we introduced a new aspect to the business which it wasn't really new, it was just that we were developing it more. Um, so we were developing the outreach program to assisted living homes and bringing um, you know, children and adults with special needs into, into my store. Um, I was really proud of all the work that had been going on so I actually submitted us for a Stevie Award for happiness as a team and um, for the happiness that we've been bringing. I'm not really thinking that we would really place anywhere because it's such a big... I read there was like 44,000 uh, votes within this voting community. Yeah. And it was international. Yeah, and we ended up being in the top three with a company from Dubai and a company in um, California. Um, but we were the only small business in the top three. Wow, so, congratulations. Yeah. This is order. I'm, I'm really proud of really proud of the ladies that work for me. They all work extremely hard. So before we get into the depths of what that outreach program is, let's set the tone. What is, what is Giggling Pig? So the Giggling Pig is, is an art studio, but it's so much more than that. It's, an art, it's a place where you can, children and adults can come and be creative. Um, we have all the tools, we have all, the, all different kinds of mediums for them to experiment with and explore. Um, but it's really a place that we really try to make connections with people. We want to, we want to get to know our community, we want to know um, who you are, what you like, what you do, um, and really become involved. It's like a big family. And you have different levels of classes, if I remember correctly, yeah. for all ages and, of course, those with special needs. And you have a brilliant staff that matches those requirements. Am I right? Yes, you are. Yeah. Okay. So I have, um, you know, a Mummy and Me class and a Piglets class, which is for the younger children. Um, and then I have Alexandra Lowe, that she's absolutely fantastic with the little ones. Um, so she does the Piglet program, and then she works with the intermediate um, children and then I have Lindsay all of these ladies have been working f with me for two to three and a half years is that how long you've been open no I'll, I'll have been open for six years in spring so where was the brainchild from take us back even a step further what made you do this I know you came to this country with this type of passion but what made you actually do it well I think I'd gotten kind of to the point where I was nannying full-time I was a single mom and it was a lot of work um, and you kind of hit, uh, I kind of hit rock bottom where I kind of felt like one day I was driving in my car, I calculated how many hours I was driving in traffic every month, which came, up, came to 40 hours a month. And I kind of sat there and I thought, wow, I've, I've really got to make a change. I'm, I, can't, I can't be doing this with my life, 40 hours of traffic a month. What could I be doing? What, what makes me happy? 
um, and really children really made me happy. It, it really means a lot to me to be able to make a difference in a child's life. Um, but then I really loved the art side of it and so I kind of, in that 40 hours every month, I kind of played with all these different ideas and kind of imagined, um, you know, what, what could I do with that. And I'd always been drawing and um, had written a, and published a children's book when I was about 25. Um, and I really wanted to take that further because that was really giving me a lot of joy. So I rented my first store downtown Shelton, 350 square feet, I think it was, not really knowing what was going to happen. You just dove into it. I did. I just kind of, I was, I was right there and I thought, you know, there's, this is the perfect place to, to build a foundation. I'm, I'm right at the bottom. <laughs> so... Uh, so, you know, it really can't, can't go wrong here. <laughs> so, and I was really very passionate about it. So, you know, after the first weekend of being there, I actually sold all my artwork, which was what I thought I was opening the store to do, was you to sell. You, okay, so and that was, was it. for one reason and yeah. it was another. And it was just so, it was just, it was so much more than I ever thought, you know, that it was going to become. And it happened very fast. Within six to eight months, um, I had moved out and moved into a thousand square feet. Two years after that, we'd totally outgrown a thousand square feet and moved into 2,000 square feet. Which is where you are now. Yeah, and it was just ne next door, literally in the same plaza, so it was fantastic. No one really had to know that we'd moved. Um, and then we have 1,500 square feet outdoors. So we have this amazing um, space that is constantly changing and growing. And, um, you know, it got to the point this year where I don't like to not do anything. I like my mind is so active. Um, I'm constantly thinking of what could we do next and how can we grow and keep keep changing. Um, and I just thought, you know, now's a really great time. We had 100 children a day over the summer. Wow. Yeah, not at the same time, like, they, you know, half yeah. day morning, half day afternoon. But, um, you know, 100, 100 children a day, and I just thought, this is it. I, I've got, now's a good time to share this with another community. And um, that was the brainchild for Bethel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Bethel is just, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't be happier. The, they're so welcoming. Um, they've just been so wonderful, coming in, you know, greeting me and, you know, welcome me to the neighborhood, and very, very supportive. And I'm, I'm, you split I'm loving your time it. before between both locations. Yeah, you because do. they're both my babies, so I can't not see one more than the other. <laughs> so, right. and I love my kids and I love my family, so I'm, I like to be there and let them all know that I'm still here and I pop in every day. Um, I'm obviously spending a little bit more time in Bethel just making sure that that community understands, um, you know, the point behind the business isn't just come in, paint a picture and leave. So what do you tell them the point is behind the business? I always tell everybody that, you know, it's, it's such a passion of mine to teach the children about kindness and compassion. And my way of doing that is through art. So uh, we have a conversation, we're painting, I'm teaching them how to compliment, I'm, I'm helping boost their um, self-esteem, um, and while we're doing that, we're kind of reminding them like to point something out positive about their, the child next to them. What are they doing that looks great? So we, we kind of do it like, it's almost like it's um, like very sneaky. We, we don't let them know that we're doing it, but they all catch on. And then, you know, within a couple of weeks, they're all, you know, going around complimenting each other and being kind. And, you know, I, I just think it's so important. So how does someone like you that is a very busy person, single mom, running two locations, even think to apply for a Stevie Award. And what is a Stevie Award? Uh, the Stevie Awards are, um, I believe, the, one of the biggest business awards in the world. So they're totally global, they're absolutely everywhere. Um, I wanted to apply because I'm franchising the business and I felt like we have won, you know, we've won Best Birthday Party Venue, um, we've won um, some smaller awards, but I felt like, you know, when I can sell my business to anybody <laughs> because I love it and, it and I'm genuine about it and I'm passionate, but, you know, people like to see if other people feel that way about you too. And, yeah. you know, Good point. You know, they, if they don't know me and they're at the other side of the country, then having an award is something that they can look at as being, you know, uh, meaningful. So how do you, in a, especially in a franchise situation, how do you translate your charisma your ability to have the children connect with their art and make positive connections with their self-esteem and their neighbor. How do you teach your staff to do that? Well, you know, it's a good question, but I feel like it's really easy. I feel like there's so many um, women who are just ready to, you know, 
make a difference in their communities. There are so many, and men, um, there's so many people that are so tired of the way things are going and they want to give back and they want to help people and I feel like it's really, it really is easy, you just have to know who you're, what you're looking for. Um, once, once I know what I'm looking for um, in an employee, it's very easy to spot it. What are you looking for in an employee? People, who people might be calling you after this. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, people who are, are kind and compassionate. Um, and I always say, you don't have to be a trained artist to teach art. That's my um, kind of you know, thought on that. I'm not a trained artist, but I did publish two children's books that I illustrated and wrote. Um, and I make art with the kids every day, and it's really about, you know, talking to them and explaining things in terms that they will understand. Um, and that's that's where the training comes in. Um, but I, I, I look for good people. Yeah, I think we all do. Yeah. It's definitely a challenge <laughs> nowadays. So now we're you've got the second location, mm -hmm. and you apply for this award. Now, I read online when I did my research that it was a very challenging application. What did they ask for? Oh man, they asked for everything that you've been doing, everything in the last 12 months, every kind of piece of happiness that you might have brought to your community. What's the biggest piece of happiness you brought to your community? I mean, there's so many different things and different groups that we worked with, but one of the, well, there's a few things. There's a child that's been coming to me for a few years who actually wrote a letter um, to the Stevies and said, their the mum did, um, and said what we'd done in their child's life. Um, and he has autism. Um, and then the other thing is we, worked, we started working with Bridgeport Hospital. Um, and we had a stroke victims group come in. Wow. Which was just absolutely amazing um, to be able to give them some joy back. Some of them were, um, they used to be artists and they couldn't move their arms or some of them had lost the ability to even talk. And we actually received letters after thanking us for giving you know, um, these people uh, another opportunity to paint again and being patient with them. So we had husbands write in from, from their wives. And Isn't that wives, amazing? Yeah. It really is. It's really, it's now really good to know. Was this your brainchild or was this one of your employees' brainchild? So Laura um, Shevlin has been working for me for over a year now, um, but I, she used to be a customer of mine um, and I, I adore her. She, ca she came in and she was working in assisted living homes for 12 years and she just had such a great way about her. I, um, she's very warm and very compassionate and kind. And I could see that right away. And so when she said she was really interested in working for me, I kind of snatched her up and um, she went to work on getting us into assisted living homes because that's where her heart lays as well. So she, um, you know, she really went in and got us into these different homes and found these different groups and let them know that we were there. And she's really built this whole other part of the business um, based on her passion, which is great to see. Yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah. And I know she's going to be coming on segment two, so we'll, we're, I want to hear exactly what she's doing in those communities and, and ways that maybe other people can join you yes. in this plight. Uh, I think we're going to take a real quick break okay. here, and we're going to come right back, and we're going to continue the conversation of success with our friend Hannah Perry from The Giggling Pig and her Stevie Awards and building a business. And if any of you are thinking about doing something like this for yourself, meaning growing a business, trying something new, expanding your horizons, this is one place to get unstuck. We'll see you back in a couple of minutes. Want a new experience in car buying? No aggravation, no confrontation, just answers to all your questions. Scap Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, car buying the way you want it to be. With one of the largest selections of new two and four door Jeep Wranglers available, we are Connecticut's Wrangler headquarters. Located in Fairfield, Connecticut, we're easy to get to. Just two and a half miles off the Merritt Parkway, exit 44 via Route 58 South. Save thousands right now during the Jeep Celebration Event and Ram Power Days. Ends October 31st. I really wanted something that felt like a home. Coming from a big house, I wanted the feel of a home as opposed to a condo. New Canaan is six minutes down the road. New Canaan's a beautiful little town to walk around. I work in Westport, my commute is 20 minutes. It's close to Westchester where my family is, so the location is ideal. There is no other town home that compares in the area. This is where I want to be. 
have a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care, Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast, without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care, open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com, like them on Facebook. At Mex on Main, Trumbull's very own Mexican Grill, we're all about fresh, fast, and friendly service. Our Main Street restaurant offers the best in traditional and non-traditional Mexican dishes, with only the best ingredients, never frozen. From authentic burritos, fajitas, quesadillas, and salads, we have something on the menu for everyone in the family. And enjoy our open salsa bar, giving you more ways to customize your meal. Stop in for lunch or dinner at 6528 Main Street Trumbull, or find out more at mexonmain.com. When it comes to local entertainment, we've got it all. From movies, local artists, etiquette, and more. Watch HAN Arts and Leisure with me, Steve Coulter, and our Arts and Leisure editor, Sally Sanders, Mondays at 1230, right here on the HAN Network. If you're watching this broadcast, you're not alone. The HAN Network is available for 200,000 Connecticut cable customers on the Frontier Network. And we've also reached 1.7 million viewers on our free live streaming sports, news, and entertainment broadcasts. To reach our rapidly growing audience, contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. You know, we like to say at the Daily Drive, it's how you fuel your mind, your body, your spirit that creates the life you live. So fuel it up well here every Tuesday or listen to us on demand. If you're thinking that you might know of someone or you'd like to be a guest on the show, you can tweet us at HN Network CT or tweet me at Denise DeGrigley and we will talk. We're talking to Hannah Perry today, the owner of The Giggling Pig, who has had an explosive set of successes <laughs> since April when you were first here. Second store, Stevie Award for Best Employer. And then we were talking on break, you're going to be speaking at a well-esteemed panel in Manhattan doing what and for who? I'm speaking on Thursday at the 11th Annual Smart Hustle Business Conference, um, which is basically other entrepreneurs um, and small business owners who have got stories to tell that can help other, you know, other small business owners. Um, and it's such an honor to be invited to, to speak in Manhattan. You know, I, I feel mean, a little bit out of my league, but. <laughs> such an honor. But you've got to tell the audience what you told me off air, which was how you did it. Because I think that's the important juxtaposition that some people need that oomph yeah. to get them moving. So I went to um, the Javits Center in New York to watch some speakers. Some of them were famous speakers um, a year ago. And I just so happened to walk into Ramon Ray's speech and I just found him incredibly motivational and his energy was on fire. He was crazy, he was funny, he gave fantastic advice and I just like, I left there and I couldn't get him out of my mind and at the end I actually met him, shook his hand, told him how much I enjoyed his, um, his talk and when I got home I kind of sat there and I thought, you know, I really should just reach out to him just on a whim. You know, if he doesn't write back there's nothing lost. Um, and I knew that he owned a magazine called Smart Hustle. So I, I sent him this you know, short, funny little email, something that I would think he would pay attention to. And he ended up emailing me back and saying, y you need to be in my magazine. So I then went out to New York in, I think it was November, December. And he interviewed me, which was so much fun. Um, and then he asked me to speak at the Smart Hustle Business Conference. So, you know, I felt like, if I didn't do that, my journey this year would be totally different. So what I'm hearing is, you it's not only sort of faith and action, you actually put stuff in action. Yeah. In other words, so, so many times you think, oh, if I visualize it or, or, you know, it'll just manifest like poof. But it really is having the vision, being able to take a little risk, yeah. be okay with rejection because you didn't know what you were going to get, right. and then letting the outcome be what it is. Mm -hmm. And now you're like part of an esteem panel. Yeah. But then you also told me there were a couple other awards that you were up for. Now, what are those? I mean, I feel like I've just 
Wow, like the bank of <laughs> awards open for you. <laughs> um, we, I am up for Female Entrepreneur of the Year. Um, Which is given by who? The Stevie Business Awards. Okay. Um, there's, there are, I mean, thousands of people who enter. So I'm, I'm um, small business. So I'm 10 or fewer employees. So there's not a lot of um, small businesses that would prob probably even enter into um, Female Entrepreneur of the Year. But, you know, I really want to, I like to push myself. And, I, and even if I didn't get anything, I don't, it, it's fine. Like I want to give myself a chance to even find out if I would get anything. And if I don't, then I, then I take that criticism and I use it and I, you know. Well, it's kind of like your art students, right? You encourage them to try new things. Yep. And it's not really about maybe the outcome of the piece, but the fact that they ventured in that expression. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. That's a good point. So that's, that's really fabulous. So now you've got the second location. Yeah. You're training your employees, and they're sort of catching your way, and you're franchising. I heard you dibble-dabble over yeah. there. <laughs> what does that take? Because that alone could be a full-time job. Oh yeah, easily. I mean, th the the thing is, I what what I tend to do is I I kind of open up a lot of things all at once. So I started the franchise process about three years ago, and I started to you know work on that and make my handbooks and get all the things in order and trademark and and do all these things. And while I was doing that, then I started doing something else and started doing something else. And then eventually, it's like I come full circle. And then I can start to focus and put in more, more like 80% into each project instead of just 20% here and 20% there. So how does a lady like that, like you, do that? I, I think you're raising two children as a single mom. Yeah. And they're very successful. So what's the mix? Because people right now are like, oh, no way. I could never. I'm scared. I'm shutting the TV off. Well, it's absolutely exhausting. And I've had like 12 coffees today because I've, I've been awake half a night. But it's... It, I think that when you're doing something that you really love and, and you're so passionate about it and you, it doesn't matter if you get five hours sleep, you wake up and you know that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. It gives you, somehow you get through the day and, and there's energy there. And I, I adore my children and they're good kids and I'm, and I'm lucky that they listen most of the time, but they're very well behaved when they're not around me. But, um, you know, I just think it is really hard to balance. Some, some days I'm really, really good at being a mom and not so good at work because I'm focusing too much on the kids. And then other days I'm fantastic at work and I feel like I'm neglecting the kids. But I think that's just normal. It's, you know. I think, you know what, every entrepreneurial person, especially entrepreneurial women, feel that way. It's mm -hmm. always the, I, I'm spending up too much time over here and not over there and something. But I think that's also the energy entrepreneurs have because mm -hmm. they're, they tend to be, if they're successful, very driven right. and very multi, I don't want to say project oriented, but multi oriented. Right. right? So what do you do when people say to you, oh my God, why are you doing that? You could find other ways to, you know, make a living or be, you know, what do you do with the naysayers that sort of nip at the ankles? It used to, it took me a long time to not take it personally and let it kind of interfere in, in my, you know, in my feelings. When you say a long time, what, what, what did you do to stop it? I started to realize that it really didn't matter what they said, that, it was, that I was doing what I loved mm. um, and that sometimes unfortunately people will tell you that things aren't a good idea based upon the fact that they wish they were doing something more with them you know with their lives so it's easy for people to say you know I think you're crazy why are you doing this instead of saying wow like what could I do what what's my passion how can I I'm figuring out their yeah own. yeah and I'm always I'm always quick and happy to help people as well so I posted something yesterday from Eleanor Roosevelt that said do what you love because you're going to be criticized anyways yeah. right <laughs> I've seen that yeah, yeah that's so great it's like just do what you love um, so You've got all this on the horizon, and I know in our next segment we're going to be talking to Laura about specifically what you've been doing in the assisted living with the adults with special needs and really sharing with our audience what they can do to kind of, if that's something they need, focus on yeah. you. But what, what's next for you? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm publishing another children's book, so it'll be another in the series of the Giggling Pig books. So I'm going to be doing that um, by spring, uh, obviously franchising. Um, January was my goal with franchising, so hopefully next year I'll start to sell um, some locations and possibly open up a third location um, either in Stamford or the New Haven area. So you're still going to stay in your business once you start to franchise yeah. it? 
That's the long-term yeah. goal. I right. couldn't. I couldn't do anything else with my life. This is sort of your passion. Yeah. So uh, before we take a break, I want to know, like, what? Tell our audience, and I try to get this out of everyone that comes on. If somebody's struggling with, I have a lot of ideas. I think I know what I want to do. I think I know my passion. Or maybe they're like, I don't know what my passion is. I've been in this X job for millions of years. What would you tell them to open the door? I think that um, there's a few things that I would tell them to do. One is really start to write everything down, all their ideas. Oh, kind of <laughs> Listen, she just gave me the shameless plug and she's not even <laughs> like supposed to do that. Very good, thank you. So write everything down um, so that you can refer to it as well and kind of build on your, your ideas. Um, if you're passionate about you know, helping people or whatever it is, I definitely recommend going to um, business conventions in New York. Go listen to people speak because sometimes they just say one thing that just makes something click and then all of a sudden, you know, things start to make sense. Um, so definitely start to, I think that opens doors. You yeah. know, putting yourself out in, in different networking groups. Put yourself groups. out yeah. there. Yeah, you can't stay home and, and grow. Yeah, this is true. You can't stay home and grow. That actually should be like the, the model <laughs> for when we repost the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna be right back to learn more about the outreach programs and how Hannah and her team are specifically helping adults with special needs in our community. You know what I always say, start with art, it's the right way. All right, we'll be back in a couple minutes. Thanks so much, everyone. I'm a filthy rich executive. I hear the markets down a million points. I freak out. I spill my large espresso. The searing pain makes me slam on the brakes. Uh-oh, your fault. And your cut rate insurance may not cover my $90,000 car, so I sue you, because that's what I do. So get all state. You can save money and be better protected from mayhem, like me. Visit your local Allstate agent, Nick Montanero, at 6528 Main Street in Trumbull for a personalized quote. This is now 44 years I've been in this business. Digital came along after I was in business for about six years. I had to totally reinvent the business. So I had to make a tremendous investment in my business. And Milford Bank was there for me. I don't really just consider Milford Bank a bank. I consider them a trusted partner in my business. My name is Jim Wilson, owner of Milford Photo. I choose to bank with Milford Bank. As you're getting back to your regular schedules, we're excited to get back to doing what we do best, offering you the freshest seasonal fare and all the ingredients for a healthy start to school. So shop Walter Stewart's for everything fresh, from A apples to Z zucchini, and from cotton candy grapes to back to nature all natural snack bags. We save you time by stocking all of your favorite back to school essentials under one roof. Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. Visit five significant houses designed by Philip Johnson in New Canaan, Connecticut on an exclusive one-day study tour on October 22nd. The tour will visit the Hodgson House, the Alice Ball House, Wiley Speculative House, and Boisana's House, culminating with an evening tour of the Glass House property and festive reception. Tickets include tours of each house, shuttle transportation, and refreshments throughout. Visit theglasshouse.org and click on What's On to get your tickets and more information. Washington Pride, now open on Main Street in Georgetown. Come enjoy our relaxed setting, excellent service, award-winning nightly happy hours, and feast on our creative new American cuisine. Connecticut Magazine's winner for best steak, Washington Prime of Georgetown. Give your day a jump start with the latest news, sports, weather, and more on Coffee Break, live on the HAN Network, weekdays at 11 a.m. Connecticut news doesn't get any more local than on Coffee Break. A local growing art business wins the Stevie Awards for bringing happiness into the community, an international award. These guys focus on community outreach programs for adults with special needs in assisted living, Holmes, am I right? Mm -hmm. And we're introducing now Laura 
Chevlin. Chevlin. I can't always say last names correctly. <laughs> we know that about me on the show. <laughs> Anyways, welcome. Well, thank welcome you. Welcome to the thank drive. You for me. So we're so glad you could be here thank and you. tell us your involvement at the Giggling Pig because Hannah is just raving about you <laughs> and what you've thank done you. with your background in assisted living to bring these art projects not only into the Bridgeport Hospital but into assisted living. So. You know, so many times we get pushed back, like, well, does art really work, and how is it effective, and ooh, does it, you know, all that stuff. So give us some insight um, to why you got this going in The Giggling Pig, and I know you're getting letters and accolades, so tell us about it. Okay, so um, I worked in a skilled nursing facility for 12 years, and definitely, and I worked within the recreation department, I was the director of recreation, and during my works, the two things that could touch any buddy was music or art um, so with with that um, I with Hannah started to reach out to different organizations we were already doing a number of um, classes and things for children but my passion for the elderly we began reaching out to senior centers assisted living skilled nursing facilities so this was a cold call you just picked up the phone. Yeah, so, yeah pretty much. There's a lot of motivation yeah. happening here yeah. today. I pretty drive. much sent out a letter um, based on having worked in the field, knowing what, as a activities person, what they're looking for. So you had a little um, insight. So I had some insight, yeah. and I just reached out, said that. How'd you find the name? You just Googled it? Yeah, basically. I mean, I <laughs> this didn't, speaks to Mark Twain's perseverance, guys. I did know of, you know, just through word of mouth and throughout my career, just knowing different homes that were in the area. Um, and then I think once we got into a couple, then we're, it, it just were traveled. In, yeah. yeah. So right now we're going to, we've been to a number of um, assisted livings. We go to one skilled nursing facility on a monthly basis. We've gone to senior centers. We've had a stroke support group uh, from the hospital come in to us. So there's I heard that some of these were former artists that couldn't even move mm -hmm. their hands. So what does it take? Tell us about these projects that we see here in the front. Like, for example, this, mm -hmm. this, this one is just, can we get a look on this? <laughs> this is some sort of paper mache Halloween yeah. hat. You see the little top is all pumpkins. It's just so well done. Is this something uh, someone in your outreach program might build? We could, yeah, absolutely. We really work with the people on the, you know, what they're capable of. So, so you customize So it. we customize. Okay. We go in usually with uh, a painting or a project in mind and we walk them through it. Some are capable of following the instructions, some need more assistance, and some, if they had an art background or, you know, if they have some artistic creativity, they just do what they want. They so, do their own thing. Right. This one that's a little more spread or paint, who is this applying to? Um, anybody can do that. That's, yeah. that that's, the, that's the great thing about it, and it doesn't have to look like anything. <laughs> But it's cool, and I like how you have them sign their name, which really gives it like ownership and yeah. possession and probably elevates their self-esteem. Absolutely. What about that one down there in the corner? Can we show that one? This is from um, one of the adult, um, no, sorry, the advanced students. Um, it's a mixed media with magazine, and paint. it's been painted over. The magazine has been painted over with obviously live in the face. But, um, you know, we work with every kind of medium, so we really want to expose everybody to it. But so even if if Flora's going into the assisted living homes, and she's taking a project like this, um, and and we know that some of them can't do it, uh, Laura really, she's got such patience and, and compassion, um, and she just sits with them and talks to them and and helps them and you know, makes them feel really good about, uh, about what they're making, and I think that's fantastic. Yeah, and this little clay thing, too, you said that a lot of the special needs uh, adults work with clay. Is there a reason, can you guys see that? Oh, look how cool that is. Is there a reason why clay is so effective, and is it one of the more effective modalities? It's great because um, it gives a lot of um, strengthening for their hands. Um, sometimes doing the more fine motor things, like holding a paintbrush, can be a little bit more difficult. Um, so especially for for senior pop, if they have um, limited hand functioning, clay is really it's great to uh, you know just for therapeutic purposes. Uh, it's almost a, like kneading bread, right? It kind of yeah. connects so many skill sets there sure. and so many memory a activators. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go into a facility, do you have any sort of pushback from the people, the the management? Are they worried? Are they concerned? And if so, what are they thinking about? I think the biggest thing is that a lot of times going in, the staff will say that, like, think that the person isn't capable of doing something. So there's already the naysayer at the door. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then what are you doing with them to 
to kind of let them relax? Well, it's amazing. A lot of times the staff comes in and out throughout the program, and they're really amazed that, you know, the skills that you just don't realize about people, that they either are capable of or they have, you know, tucked away some somewhere inside of them, that they might have been a famous art, you know, they been might have been a... Uh, successful artist in their 20s and now that they're in their 90s you just you just don't know about people. Do you find resistance from some of the people you're working with? Yeah. Like what's the biggest <laughs> resistance that comes to top of mind? That they can't do it. So right off the bat yeah. I'm not creative I can't do this. Right. How do you break down that barrier? Kind of just doing it step by step like we usually start with the background which everybody pretty much can paint just a solid background. Um, if they have hand or arm limitations we can always either put the piece off of the easel and put it onto a table or we can um, give them a, a heavier brush maybe, um, turn the easel so that they don't have to move as much. Um, but we just kind of take it one step at a time and work with their strengths and what they can do. And probably not being judgmental allows them to flourish a little bit more because I'm also thinking now if you aren't in an assisted living but for our viewers that are watching and they have maybe family at home, what can they do? What can, can they go get clay? What would they you can. recommend? It's great, you know, it, t it touches so much. It, it uh, physically, as we said, with the clay and how it, how it helps them physically, emotionally, because at the end they do, they, going into it, they think they can't do it. Coming out of it, they say, wow, they can't believe the artwork that they created. And, and they probably want to see you the next week. Exactly. Right? They're ready exactly. to see you. And socially, too, um, it's a great activity for if you have a family member to do with them because it, it just brings up so much conversation that might be difficult. So what are your goals for your program going forward? What's I, your vision? I would love to see us in many more um, more places. Uh, now that we have opened the second location, we've just sent out some flyers out to some of the homes in the Bethel Danbury area. So you're also trying to bring them into the stores, not only go out into their locations. We did get recently as well, we, we, got, we acquired a new van, um, oh. Giggles on the Go. You might see it driving about, it's kind of hard to miss. <laughs> um, so we do, you know, now we're actually able to travel out more with, with more. You've got the art truck rolling. Yeah. Right, that's, that's pretty awesome. fun. <laughs> Tell me about some of your biggest su success stories. Give me one or two clients that have been, without giving their names of course, sure. that are absolutely, you just can't stop raving about them. Um, I can remember, I think the first assisted living that we went into, there was a woman who oh, was yeah. pretty, it, she was quite low functioning. Um, and again, we had the, the staff who, you know, just have her sit in here and she can watch. Um, oh. But you go over to her and you put, we put um, a paintbrush in her hands and sat with her and Diana just told her to go back and forth. And um, she was able to paint the background. And that little step, um, you know, that, that was a lot of progress for her. And it was, and she felt good about it. The staff were amazed. Um, so it was, it was very rewarding. It would be curious to do a case study on her to see how maybe her health improved over a period of time after introducing your, your yeah, art classes. That would be really interesting. There's a definite yeah. correlation to how art heals. I mean, I'm sure I don't need to tell mm -hmm. you ladies that. Absolutely, what about yeah. another story? That's why, any children that have had special needs and this has really helped them, whether it be in school or socializing with others or just better self-esteem? We have um, one child who's been coming to us for, I think, three years now. He was actually originally asked to leave somewhere because, because of his special needs and we welcomed him. Um, he's the funniest, <laughs> funniest kid um, you could ever meet. <laughs> and he has just, every time we see him, he doesn't come all through the year. He comes usually over um, a three month period during the summer. Um, every year when we see him, when he comes back, I, we can't believe like the progress in him. Um, but he absolutely loves art and that's his favorite thing and he actually said he's gonna give me a run for my money because he's gonna open up uh, his okay. own art studio based on your ideas right? <laughs> based on everything that we've taught him <laughs> <laughs> and he actually makes these posters for us and he, and he names what his art studio is gonna be called and he pins it up around the studio <laughs> and tells people come to his art studio not the giggling pig <laughs> so he's just he's really funny um, I think just seeing him for, for three years, see him grow, is just, I can't even tell you how rewarding it is well, doing what we do. you've affected him on all levels, <laughs> which is great, right? Yeah. You're releasing yeah. his inner business I'm, I'm guy. Quite, I'm quite concerned, though, about the future. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you guys are pretty busy growing two locations. Um, the greatest thing that I love about your story is how you connect with the community. I don't know if you guys have watched previous shows, but we've had different people on talking about conscious capitalism, where all stakeholders, not only the company, the employees, and the resources outside thrive. And you guys are like the walking poster child for that. So I'm a pretty busy lady, too, and I know what I do to relax. What do you guys do to relax and kind of recalibrate <laughs> and be the best versions of yourself? Um, what do we do to relax? We try to have girls' night. Yes, girls' nights. Girls' or night. Girls' night. Okay. What else? <laughs> that's only once in a while. There's got to no, be that's, something. That's, that's probably that's a little bit. That's more than once in a while. <laughs> that's recently. Uh, girls' night is, is just, you know, you absolutely have to find time to be with your friends. That they they motivate you, they make you happy. You can laugh until you cry, um, and having that on a regular basis is really important for your for your everything for every part of who you are. Um, and then the other thing that I think, what do I do to relax? <laughs> I don't I don't know I don't <laughs> I don't think that's coffee. it. I'm like that too. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, as we kind of close today, what would you tell our viewers? who are looking at you guys saying, wow, you're really motivated. I need to be able to do that too with my next greatest idea. One great idea to m maybe move someone forward today to say, I can do it too, and not necessarily open an art studio. <laughs> you know, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, I would say just, if you have an idea, just go with it. And don't take any resistance from anybody or yourself. Um, I mean, Hannah's a true inspiration for that, that she had a dream and came true. So, thank you. Say. And one great idea for helping our community at large be more effective when working with special needs people. Because I think people in general, um, if they don't understand, then they don't get involved for right. fear, mm -hmm. right? Never mind the political climate we right. have today where people are saying crazy things about right. special needs. So what can we do? I always like to offset negativity on the show. What can we do? What can our viewers do? I think you, you to know, be better at understanding. First of all, if you're afraid of something, then the best thing to do is research it. <laughs> you know, understand it, take some time, um, and you know, really, there's nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> right. Um, so just be yourself. Learn be to be yourself. kind and just say Compassion. hello. You know, just say hello. Hello. Yeah, I literally. Say that all the, time. <laughs> the universal language is a smile. Let's start with yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Well, um, I'm so thankful you both joined us today. And how can we uh, find out more about you? Gigglingpig.com? Yep, the gigglingpig.com. We have gigglingpig.com that we can flake up there. And um, upcoming events. I mean, we're going to wait to see if these other awards come to pass, but upcoming events you'd like people to know about or how they might get involved with your organization? Um, just by going on the website, you can find absolutely everything. We've got links to everything on there. If you want to find out if we won the awards in November, it's, um, that will be posted on the website. You can mm -hmm. follow us on Facebook. Um, we're re really everywhere. LinkedIn, Pinterest, you okay. know, everywhere. Twitter. So get on board. Oh, there you go. Get on board and check them out. And uh, I'm so thankful for the opportunity to meet you. Thank you. And thanks yeah, so thanks much, Hannah. Thank you again. And we're going to see you next year, because yeah. I'm sure by next year, you'll have even more of an explosion of things to tell us. I hope so. So if you've enjoyed the show today, I hope you'll let us know. I hope you found your motivation in it. And please give us a little feedback. And again, join us every Tuesday here on the HN Network. It's the drive. How you fuel your mind, your body, your spirit creates the best life you live. Fuel it here. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.